Welcome everyone. Welcome to yet another webinar by SQL Maestros. Uh, my name is Amit Bansal. I'm going to be your instructor and host for this session. This session is titled as Top 3 SQL Server Tuning Techniques, Part 1. The reason why I chose multiple parts is because it's very difficult to define what is top three and what is next three, et cetera, because there are so many things that you can actually do in SQL Server Performance Tuning. Now, um, the intro is already there in the chat window. So in case you're joining just now, I'm kind of pasting it again in the chat window for all of you. So you could connect with me using some of those links and I'll share that with you again later. Now, before I uh, get into more introductions or something, first, let's get started, okay? We are using Adventure Works 2016 for the purpose of this demo. So I'm going to get started with the query. Let's turn on statistics time and IO on. All of you know what this is going to do. It's going to give you the IO statistics, how many reads, uh, et cetera, have happened, and time metrics, which is like CPU time and elapsed elapse time. Feel free to ask any question in the Q&A panel, and I kind, I kind of will continue to look into the Q&A panel on, the, on this monitor on the right-hand side. Now, I am going to run this query. So there is a table called DBO transactions table, which has about 30 million records, and there is a column here called actual cost. What we are trying to do is group data by actual cost, and we are also doing a count star, which is an aggregation, and then I am ordering by count star descending. So I'm kind of going to look at uh, the highest costs on top and sort it down that way. I'm doing option max top one, just to make sure that the plan is neat and clean, because of course, uh, with so many records in this table, uh, this is going to run in parallelism, and I don't want to uh, kind of uh, see all those parallel operators because then teaching will become a little easier. So I'm going to turn on actual execution plan on the toolbar there or press control M. So let's go and execute this query. Now, while this is running, let's look at DBO transactions table, what exactly it has. So if I just take this one, and move over to a new window just to show you like top 10 records what exactly is the structure of this table so you can see it has transaction id product id transaction date quantity and actual cost you can see a lot of zeros out there but then of course the values are way different now the table is not very wide right you can see that there are just five attributes out there but it has a lot of data and uh, i mean performance tuning of course becomes uh, challenging and complex when you're dealing with a lot of data okay so let's go back to the query and this is still running so i think on my laptop this is going to take about uh, a minute or so slightly more than a minute and this will be up soon now in the chat window, I have put down some links in case you are um, on LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter, wherever you would like to follow. There's a lot of free content out there. There are YouTube channels also out there. I constantly keep posting a lot of videos on SQL Maestro's YouTube channel. It's straightforward, youtube.com slash SQL Maestro's. And I'm also on Twitter, A underscore Bunsen. My LinkedIn ID is also there in the chat window. Now, when you talk about this example, let me tell you all these examples that I'm showing you today, I'm actually going to take this just one query and I'm going to tune it from start to finish. Um, and when we say start to finish, there's so many things that you can do, but in this given one hour, I'm going to do about three key things. That's why I say top three query tuning techniques. So we're going to start uh, from the starting point, of course, we'll do technique one, then we will do technique two, and then we will do technique three. While you see this demo, we will continue to work on this just one example. And we're going to tune it in different stages using these multiple techniques that I talked about. And when you're watching the, this demo, you will have a lot of ideas that are going to come across to you. Even though the chat window is uh, disabled, you can, of course, uh, share your ideas in the Q&A panel. Now, some of you are already asking questions uh, if this video is going to be enable, uh, made available, the recording after the session, of course it will be. So you can uh, not ask that question again, no problem there. The video recording will be made available. 
Okay, so the, the query is complete. Let's jump over to the execution plan. Now, when you look at the execution plan, let's right click and zoom to fit. What you see in front of you is a very simple plan because first thing it's a serial execution. And that's one of the reasons why I turned off parallelism. I used max dot one, otherwise you will see a lot of parallel operators. Now it becomes a lot more easier to explain. What is happening? You are trying to get all the data from transactions table. So you will of course expect that an index scan is happening. Note that there is no where clause here. So you're scanning all the data. The moment, and then of course you're doing group by. So when you do group by aggregation, SQL Server decides to implement a hash match, and then you want to order by. So SQL Server puts up a sort operator. The moment you look at this execution plan, something is going to catch your attention, which is the warning symbols on hash match and sort operator. And you know what we typically do is you will straight away jump over to these operators and start looking what is this warning all about. You will look at hash match, you will look at sort, et cetera. But the moment you get into query tuning, there's so many things you can do, but there are a few things that you should do first, or probably the first thing that you should do. What comes to your mind? What is that first thing you would like to check in this execution plan rather than panicking and jumping over to sort operator and hash match? Maybe you can use the Q&A panel to put down your answers. What is the first thing you would try to do? So, okay, so Rajesh says, okay, go and look at the cost. You know, cost, if I take the cursor over the select operator here, and you can see that there is something called as estimated uh, subtree cost. I think this is what Rajesh talks about, 378. This is really 378 units. Now, this is really not going to give me any sense of what this query is doing. Remember, cost of a query, which you can get from the select operator, is very, very relative. A number like 5 or 10 or 300 or 3,000 or 30K or 3 million, it can really go you know, wide and, and wild. It is very relative. There is no unit of measurement here. It is just a number. Before we go and look into the cost factors, IO cost, CPU cost, overall query cost, the first thing that I would like to do is check the cardinality estimation. Now, if I if you look at all these iterators here, each iterator is an independent piece of code. It, it works in isolation. So think about an uh, iterator like a mini program. It takes input will do some operation on that input and send the output to the next operator. Index scan is fairly straightforward. Let's take the cursor over here and you can look at two numbers there. So we can see numbers of rows read. This should be actual number of rows read. And there's going to be one more thing that I'm going to be see estimated number of rows to be read. And you have estimated number of rows where, okay, estimated number of, okay, there you go, estimated number of rows per execution. So there's only one execution. Now you can see actual number of rows read and estimated number of rows read. Do you see that number matching? Of course, there's a difference of one, but that's very close. So you can see SQL Server is fairly straightforward here. You're going to the table, you're scanning the entire data that you want, no brainer there, all good. Another easier way of looking at that is take the cursor over the arrows and arrows can give you a much clearer picture. So you can see actual number of rows is about like 31 million and you can see estimated is about 31 million. So we are all good there. Let's move on to the next iterator there. Now comes hash match. And of course in hash match, things are not as good. We can see there is some spilling happening about 187 K pages are being spilled down to disk, et cetera. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do here is look at cardinality estimation. Now, this tooltip has a lot of flying numbers. And of course, tracking down the you know, estimation versus, versus actual sometimes gets a little tricky because you have number of estimated number of rows per execution is about 370K here. And actual number of rows for all execution is about 18 million. Look at that number. And again, I'm going to make it easier by just taking this over the cursor here. Now, our first catch here is this number, these numbers, actual versus estimation. Estimation here is when SQL Server was building this plan, it estimated that it is going to return 370,000 rows approximately, but actually it returned about 18 million rows. So there's quite a bit of difference, huge gap out there. 
Now, estimations will always not be correct or will not be accurate. This is a really hard part by SQL Server, you know, uh, ensuring that estimations are always as good as actuals or vice versa. What do you think uh, one important object in SQL Server that estimations are dependent on? Where is this cardinality estimation done from? Anyone, you can use the Q&A window to put down your answers. 